This video is about standard F13, which is all about limits and continuity of functions of several variables. Um, so we are asked to evaluate this limit here. Um, I told you in class that I'd pretty much only ask you about um, limits that are sort of calc three analogs of calc one techniques that you've already studied, um, except for in that special case when we know that the limit does not exist. And we'll, and we'll see an example like that in just a bit. Um, so let's see. At x equals 2, y equals 12, see what happens here. Let's see, the numerator is 12 squared minus 2 times 12 oops, minus 30 times 2 squared. Just abbreviating that, abbreviating that numerator. So I get 144 minus 24 minus uh, 4 times 30, 120. So the numerator is 0. I bet at the same time the denominator is 0. If not, the answer is 0. We're done. OK. And the denominator at x equals 2y equals 12 is 12 squared minus 8 times 2 times 12 plus 12 times 2 squared. So we end up with 144 minus um, 16 times 12 or 8 times 24. What's that? I don't know. But this is uh, 4 times 12. Uh, so that's easy. I can just do uh, 12 times 4 minus 16 um, times 12. I'll factor out the 12. It's going to be 14 minus 12 times or let's do 12 times uh, 4 minus 16. You see that that's going to be a negative 12. 144 minus 144 will be 0. So this is a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. OK. So I imagine we're going to have to factor and reduce. Factor and reduce, excuse me. Okay, so I have the limit as what x, y approaches 212 of this expression over here. And basically, you just want to factor that numerator and denominator as much as possible. My line's a little crooked, sorry. Um, I've got y squared minus xy minus 30x squared. And you want to factor that the same way that you would factor an algebra class. First times first is y squared, so I'll have a y and a y here. And then I'm almost ignoring the x, and I'm focusing on that negative 1 and that 30. And I'm saying to myself, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 30 that add to negative 1? Negative 5, or excuse me, 6 and 5 will work if I use negative 6 and positive 5. Um, now that's what it would be if there were no x's there. But then um, there are x's there, so we'll multiply by x. So outer times outer is 5xy, and inner times inner is negative 6xy, so I get the negative xy in the middle. And then last times last is that negative 30x squared, which is what we wanted. So that's the numerator. And the denominator is just this. First times first is y squared. I need two numbers that multiply to give me 12 that add to negative 8. Um, well, a negative times a negative would be positive, and negative 6 plus negative 2 um, is a negative 8. So this would work if there were no x's there, but there are x's there. So we get this. So we have y minus 6x times y plus 5x, all divided by y minus 6x times y minus 2x. And as we're approaching 212, well, at 212, we'll have a 0 over 0 indeterminate form because of these guys. Um, but as long as we're not on the line y equals 6x, well, then this over that, um, they're going to be exactly the same number. They're just not 0 over 0 anymore. They're just going to be a number over itself. So that's gone. 
and that's for y not equal to 6x. If y is equal to 6x, that doesn't hold up. y equals 6x is not in the domain of this function. Um, okay, now we have the limit as xy approaches 212 of y plus 5x over y minus 2x. And our question is now, if I plug in 212, is this function well-defined? Well, if y is 12, next is two, I have 12 minus four. So that's gonna work out just fine. So this, is, this function is continuous at 212, so we'll just substitute in 12 for y and two for x. So I end up with 22 over eight. Divide the numerator and denominator by two. And I get 11 over four. Okay. So that's how we handle that. Factor and reduce. This is us showing that the numerator and denominator are both zero. And then over here, we're just factoring. Now, I would prefer not to do my work this way, but sort of did it that way. So this limit is equal to 11 over four when y is not equal to 6x. We don't want y to equal to 6x because that's not in the domain. Okay, so in this one, we're asked to evaluate the limit as well. Let's look at it. If I substitute in 0, 0, do I get a 0 over 0 in determinant form again? I think I do. I get a 0 in the numerator. That's 0 squared plus, or 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is another 0 over 0 in determinant form. But this time it involves a radical, so we're going to um, multiply and divide by the conjugate. Just like you did in Calc 1. And remember, the conjugate of a plus b is a minus b and vice versa. And when I'm looking at this, don't change the signs under the radical. I know it's tempting to do. I'm thinking of that radical expression as a and that minus one as a minus b. So that's my a minus b here. And I want a plus b to multiply that. Now in the numerator, I'm just going to multiply those together. I will distribute where the conjugates are because the conjugates will simplify. Don't distribute in the numerator at the same time though, because then you won't be able to see the common factors. And that's x squared plus y squared, that entire quantity times that entire quantity. Those parentheses are really important without them. They're not equal. First times first, it's gonna get rid of those radicals. Outer times outer and inner times inner are the same, so they reduce, and then last times last is negative one. See it? See it coming? I've got a zero here and a zero here, but as long as we are not at zero, zero, um, well, we're gonna be fine. This is not zero the rest of the time. Um, and we're taking the limit as x, y approaches zero, zero. So that's going to equal 1. Remember, when you're taking the limit, x, y is not actually equal to that value. We're just getting very, very close to that ordered pair, and we're seeing what happens to the z values on our graph. So the limit of this function is the same as the limit of this function. The question is, is this function continuous at 0, 0? And I think we can all see it is. It's just going to be the square root of 1 plus 1, which is 2. OK. 
So you distribute those two conjugates so that it simplifies. Don't distribute in the numerator, otherwise you're not gonna see that factor. And then once you've reduced everything, you end up with a single factor and you evaluate it. That one happens to be continuous at that point. Okay, now in this last question, we're asked to show that this limit does not exist. Now this is another zero over zero indeterminate form. Um, but we're told in advance that it doesn't exist and we're asked to show it. So I'm gonna draw my xy plane. Now remember these are z values, they're above or below the xy plane here. at zero, zero. But we want to approach zero, zero from a couple of different directions and, and show um, that we get two different limits because if the limit doesn't exist, like that's one way that we can prove that it doesn't exist. Um, I think probably the easiest way, easiest approach would be to let either x or y equal zero and go along that path. Let's look at the path um, x equals zero. So on the path x equals zero, that's the y-axis, we're going this way towards zero, zero. And the question is, what happens to the z values as we approach zero, zero along that path on this function? So then I'll look at the limit as xy approaches zero, zero. I'm replacing x with zero. And so we end up with zero over um, y squared. So it's just gonna be zero. So along this path, the z values are approaching zero. Okay. Now, if I looked at the path y equals zero, I'd get exactly the same answer again. So I don't want to go along the path y equals zero. Now look at this function. I know it's a little bit blurry. It's a little bit hard to see. It's right there. We'd like to choose a path so that the numerator and denominator um, are going to reduce really nicely. So I end up with a fraction that's not zero. Since I see an x cubed up here and a y squared down here, and I know that x cubed squared is x to the sixth, and x to the sixth is right here. I'm going to let y equal x cubed. So let's look at the path y equals x cubed. And I'll show you in just a minute why this works. So I'm approaching zero, zero. I've got three x cubed times y over x to the six plus two times y squared. And I'm letting y equal x cubed. So here's the path y equals x cubed. We're approaching zero, zero along this path now. You always have to choose a path that actually goes through that point. You can't choose x equals one because x equals one does not go through zero, zero. But y equals x cubed does go through zero, zero. We're approaching along this path. And again, the reason why I chose x cubed was look what happens. When I replace y with x cubed here and here, I end up with x cubed times x cubed is x to the sixth. And then I have x cubed squared, that's another x to the sixth. And have x to the sixes everywhere. So that's gonna simplify really nicely. So your goal really, or often is, when you're looking at these problems, to ask yourself, like, what could I choose for y? So that when I'm done, all of these terms are sort of like terms. This is a like term with this and this, so that everything cancels nicely. So I've got three x cubed, or x to the sixth up there, because you add the exponents. Here you multiply the exponents, also happens to be x to the sixth. So I have x to the sixth 
plus 2x to the 6th. We know that that's 3x to the 6th over itself. Now x is not equal to 0. We're just approaching 0 along this path. So this is not 0 over 0 right now. We're on a path where we've got 3x to the 6th over 3x to the 6th. Since x isn't actually 0 yet, the limit of this is equal to the limit of 1. And of course, the limit of 1 is 1. So along this path, the z values are approaching 1. And along this path, the z values are approaching 0. Since we get two different limits, that limit does not exist. So we'll say this implies, um, that the limit is x, y approaches 0, 0 in general. I'm just going to say of the function it does not exist. And let's explain our answer because the limits along x equals 0 and y equals x cubed are not equal. And that's it. That's how we handle problems like that.